Hey what's up guys, today we have episode number 32 of 10 things you didn't know about. In today's video we will be looking at 10 facts you might not have known about Rudolf Diesel. Now let's get started. Number 1. The inventor of the diesel engine was Rudolf Christian Karl Diesel. Rudolf Diesel was a German inventor born in Paris, France. Diesel graduated in January of 1880 with highest academic honors and returned to Paris, where he assisted his former Munich professor, Karl von Linn, with the design and construction of a modern refrigeration and ice plant. Around a decade later, Rudolf Diesel patented a design for his engine on February 28, 1892. In the following year, he explained his design in a paper called theory and construction of a rational heat engine to replace the steam engine and contemporary combustion engine. He called his invention a compression ignition engine that could burn any fuel later on. The prototypes he built were said to have run on peanut or vegetable oil and needed no ignition system. However, Diesel soon realized that his original cycle would not work and he adopted the constant pressure cycle. In early summer 1893, Diesel's first prototype engine was built in Augsburg. He would make many modifications to his prototype and in 1896, it was considered a success. Rudolf Diesel became a millionaire by 1898. Number 2. Diesel didn't invent water injection, but he did call for it to be used in his first engine designs. Water injection was first used in a Banky engine, invented by the man who created the carburetor in 1894. This modification increased the compression ratio of gasoline burning engines to a mind-blowing 6.7 to 1. This important ratio was increased in the 1920s through the introduction of the gasoline additive tetraethyl lead. Today's gasoline engines have roughly a 10 to 1 compression ratio, while diesel engines run more than 16 to 1. Number 3. Rudolf Diesel's original engine design called for a 52 to 1 compression ratio. This revolutionary path came directly from the French physicist Sadi Cornau, whose trailblazing ideas drove Diesel's engine to the ragged edge of destruction. Diesel predicted that his engine's peak combustion temperatures would be over 2000 degrees. Diesel reasoned that by the time the piston got to the bottom of its stroke, the increase in cylinder volume would have theoretically caused the temperature to drop to 248 degrees. This combination was hypothetically good for 73% thermal efficiency. Diesel's design also eliminated the need for external water cooling. Number 4. Diesel's first engine ran on gasoline, and ironically that is the first fuel to ever be put in a diesel engine. At the time, Diesel was in uncharted waters, and he wanted to prove many different things. One of them was automatic combustion. His initial test engine proved this by creating an uncontrolled explosion, which nearly caused Rudolf Diesel's early death. Still, the reason for the high compression engine was thermodynamic theory, not automatic combustion, which came along as an extra bonus. Number 5. Today you would never hear an engineer badmouth Rudolf Diesel, but that wasn't always the case. Established engine builders of the time called his design crazy and nicknamed Diesel's engine the paper engine because it looked good on paper but they thought it would never become anything more. Once the engine finally started to catch on, American diesel engine builders fundamentally disagreed with Diesel on many technical points. For example, Edward Meyer said, While I have the highest opinion of Mr. Diesel's knowledge of thermodynamics, I do not consider him to have sufficient practical ability to build a wheelbarrow. His criticism of our first American engine was childish and absurd. The constant attacks wore on Rudolf Diesel. In 1913, he said, The introduction of a new idea is a time of the fight against stupidity and jealousy, laziness and malice, secret resistance and open struggle, a terrible time of conflicts with humans and a martyrdom also if you are successful. Number 6. When Diesel first started thinking of his engine, his mind didn't focus on pistons, specific fuel types, and crankshafts. Instead, he was interested in diagrams, pressure volume diagrams to be more exact. Sadie Carnot's perfect theoretical engine made a square shape on a PV diagram with its compression and expansion. Diesel's outline was more of a diamond leaning to its left. The fatter the diamond, the more efficient the engine. Number 7. Diesel's ideas were light years ahead of his time. He often had to come up with practical solutions so that his theoretical ideas could be put to the test. One of these hurdles was containing highly pressurized fuel with an easy to assemble connection. Regular threaded fittings leaked and the sealants that were available worked for a while, but eventually were dissolved by the fuel. His fix was to forge a conical taper on the fuel line end and a matching seat on the other end. This wedge created a tight fit we still use today. Number 8. 
Rudolf Diesel battled manic depression and migraines his whole life. By 1903, he was rich but losing control of his patents and his mind. His doctors told him to take a break. During his rest, he managed to publish a book that was supposed to solve the social problems of the world associated with labor, capital, and industrialization. It was called Solidarism, the natural economic freeing of mankind. On the cover of this book were the words love, brotherliness, charity, peaceableness, veracity, and justice. Diesel tried to tackle people problems the same scientific way he dealt with engines. He felt that since workers owned their labor, they should have better contracts with their employers. Number 9. The belief that Diesel designed his engine to run on vegetable oil makes a lot of people feel warm and fuzzy, but it's not true according to Lyle Cummins. The vegetable oil myth probably came from the French auto company, a diesel licensee which displayed an engine running on peanut oil at the 1900 Paris exhibition. However, it can be argued that diesel designed his engine to help regular working people, since he experienced the toil of labor at an early age and had bohemian friends in Paris. Number 10. On the evening of September 29th, 1913, diesel boarded the GER steamer SS Dresden in Antwerp on his way to a meeting in England. He took dinner on board the ship and then retired to his cabin at about 10 p.m. However, by morning, Diesel was no longer on board. The bed in Diesel's cabin hadn't been slept in, although his night attire was laid out on it. Friends and relatives were very confused. They speculated that he had fallen overboard, arguing that his frequent insomnia might have made him pace the deck when everyone else was asleep. But the sea had been calm that night, and as the story developed, a more likely explanation emerged. Suicide, motivated in part by financial troubles. Ten days later, the crew from a Dutch boat came upon the corpse of a man floating in the North Sea near Norway. The body was in such an advanced state of decomposition that it was unrecognizable, and they did not bring it aboard. Instead, the crew retrieved personal items such as a pill case, wallet, ID card, pocket knife, and eyeglass case from the clothing of the dead man, and returned the body to the sea. On October 13th, these items were identified by Rudolf's son, Eugene Diesel, as belonging to his father. On October 14, 1913, it was reported that Diesel's body was found at the mouth of the Scheldt by a boatman, but he was forced to throw it overboard because of heavy weather. In 1940, a story from Time had noted that Diesel had long been plagued by health woes and money troubles. He was a better inventor than investor. However, the story questioned suicide as an explanation for his disappearance, arguing that in 1913 things were going fairly well. And it notes ominously, no note, no clue, no trace of his body was ever found. While there was never an official investigation into Diesel's disappearance, its strangeness and his relative celebrity kept the case in the public eye, and a few tantalizing details eventually emerged. One, according to Greg Paul, the author of Biodiesel, Growing a New Energy Economy, was that just before he left, Diesel gave his wife a bag he told her not to open until the following week. It contained 20,000 German marks, along with financial statements that revealed the depths of the family's debt. An even more persuasive piece of evidence was found in his notebook, where he had penciled a small cross next to the date, September 29th. So that is it for this episode. If you want more information on Rudolf Diesel or just Diesel, check out our Diesel History playlist. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. Before you leave, like the video, subscribe to our channel, click that notification bell, and comment below. What did you think of some of these Rudolf Diesel facts? Need new parts for your rig? Check out our website, jackschromeshop.com, as we have a wide variety of products. And if you can't find what you're looking for, just give us a call and we'll find what you need. If you want to stay up to date on new content coming your way or just discuss all things Chrome, check out the Chrome Corner Wednesdays at noon with our host Dave Coleman. Thanks again guys for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, if your rig don't shine, you don't know Jack.